Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first day of the round of eight, season 17 of ASL. And once again with me is our TVP expert to help us out. It is Gypsy93. What's up? <laughs> yeah, TVP yeah. expert yourself. Yeah, right. I don't think so. Check that seawall stats, man. Look, it's looking pretty oh, bad. Oh, no. Yeah, but seawall, you know, goes up and down. Uh, well, anyway, good morning, everyone. And I'm so excited, honestly, for today, but not just for today, for the round of eight as a whole. I think this is uh, probably the most exciting round of eight we've ever, ever had in the ASL. Yeah, a lot of people have been commenting how strong the round of eight is. We're just going to shoot over to the caster screen right now so we can see our oh. beautiful faces, see how hyped we are for this series. Our first matchup is, of course, going to be Best versus Sharp. Someone on Team Liquid posted a video of, vi of Best responding, or was it responding? Reacting to his matchup. He was very excited to get Sharp. I don't think it's because... Oh, I got to see that. I don't think it's because necessarily Sharp's, you know, like somebody that he just dominates but it's more like well who else do you want do you really want to get you know rush do you want to get mini do you want to get sulky i don't yeah. think so uh no i'm uh, you're totally right about that i mean i think out of all the eight players here uh sharp is probably going to be seemingly um you know the the most susceptible i i guess is a good way of putting it but the bottom line is he, you know, he almost slapped Snow. And mm. I mean, Sharp has had really good results uh, recently. So as much as everyone's kind of used to his skill level being, you know, maybe a bit lower than the rest of the cast here, uh, it seems like honestly, recently he's doing, he's performing much above that. So I'm not sure that this is, uh, you know, just given the fact that Sharp has had such a good uh, showing in his group, in my opinion, and also he won the wild card i think you know of course best he's gonna be feeling good this is pvt uh this is best pvt which is, has always been kind of renowned and you know we best did well against light as well um so i'm sure best is a bit favored going into this but i wouldn't expect you know i wouldn't be surprised if we get an upset here wouldn't be surprised either and we're going to be going into the highlights of best and sharp throughout their tournament so let's check them out right now Yep, so we are back, and if I read that graphic correctly, it actually said that overall versus each other, four and three, sharp versus best. I was not expecting to see that stat. I was expecting it to be maybe slightly in favor of best. But I, oh, one second, mm -hmm. I gotta fix my audio. All right, we're still alive? Yeah, we're still live. Okay, alive, you know, live, we're both live. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, going into the interview here, of course, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we had the, uh, I don't know, I, what is there to talk about, Nyokin? I mean, I'm, I'm out of ideas. Yesterday, I didn't see you in uh, NAPL. Yeah, you haven't seen me ever. I don't yeah. think you will ever see me there. But I'm waiting for you, man. You're waiting for me? But if I join, yeah. then there will be three Terrans. That's too many, isn't there? Uh, no. <laughs> Yesterday there was five Zergs, man. <laughs> I know. I saw <laughs> you had three on your team. I was like, wow. Yeah, st stack it up with the Zergs. Actually, In case yes. uh, any of you guys don't know what the NAPL is, that's the NA Pro League. 
it's uh you know an event we have a lot of uh times uh but you know recently it's been a bit slow so we kind of do it uh, every two weeks sometimes every week and then artosis joins us it's a lot of fun uh and it's very it's we're mirroring kind of the korean uh, pro league uh, scene so and yesterday we had a big night mm. and went down to the super ace oh yeah and how'd that go uh it went well oh yeah for who uh, who was the ace n not for artosis oh no yeah artosis being sent out as the super ace and who do you face um he, he faced the big jit <laughs> oh, okay well, yeah of course it went poorly then yeah yeah well but it was fun it was a lot of fun it was uh it went down to the wire we're gonna have to convince you to join us at some point peer pressure maybe man i don't know yeah well definitely it definitely can't be going on i kept it definitely can't play in it right now because asl man i can't stay up like you can when you're staying yeah. up till one in the morning no i stayed up until uh no we finished around 11 something so i went to sleep at 12. it's not that bad you know i'm on five hours of sleep that's plenty okay um yeah you've been casting a lot man you're like a professional caster now <laughs> yeah professional casting all these events on sarcast doing asl doing bsl oh it's been a lot man it's been tiring asl and then i had vsl which started on friday this week yeah and those games were long they were long and yeah. now i have AS and then even though people don't know it but on sunday i cast for starcast which gets later posted on youtube so literally it was monday tuesday asl friday saturday vsl sunday starcast and here yeah. i am on a m monday and then tuesday more asl that's uh you know i don't know how do you do it how i don't know how you do it man but yeah it's a lot well i was looking at the player history on liquipedia before we got into today and we were talking about how well sharp is performing but actually best has been doing really well also one of his recent games versus royal or like like show matches versus royal yeah. i i saw the stat or I saw the result, 7-0, and I was like, wow, Royal crushed him. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm on Best page here. This is not Royal's page. That means <laughs> Best won 7-0. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, I think a lot of people have, uh, the pros have been commenting. At least I was watching the, what's it called, the uh, the group nomination ceremony or whatever that was subbed. And uh, the pros were commenting on how Royal hasn't been doing uh too well lately so um that's not that but that is an impressive result i mean best is looking really good these days so i you know i gotta say of course you know we were talking about this he's probably favored going into this match but i don't know man like sharp sometimes he just comes out of nowhere and does really well so hello everyone Nayokin here. I had to make a quick edit because of the music, but I wanted everybody to be able to see what the map picks were. And with that said, let's get back into the cast. Besides, I mean, this uh, ASL's map pool has been really good, in my opinion. So, you know, we have a really good round of eight just stacked with amazing players, and it's supported by this really nice map pool as well. So I think we're going to have just amazing matches all together yeah and this graphic is showing the history of best in asl i just saw the latest one which was versus mind in season 15. now we're looking at sharps and his most recent in season 16 was round of eight versus mini where he ended up losing three to one but you can see you know he was going pretty far all the way up until round of season eight and then kind of not that far through season uh three season nine to season 16 but now that he's back uh, in shape maybe this could be the first actually i guess technically the third time he makes it to the round of four you can see in season one he went all the way to the finals is that what it said versus shuttle wow yeah so you don't remember that <laughs> that was a long time ago man <laughs> i feel like i remember watching that but i don't remember if it was live or not but 
I mean, what was that? He was uh, the last time he was in a round of eight uh, was obviously the the last season, but from season eight to 16, not having any round of eight appearances, that was a long drought for him. So it really does seem like uh, Sharp is doing really well for himself in the past two seasons. And let's see here if he can actually make the semifinals. Again, against Best, it's going to be very difficult, of course. Um, best, best matchup has always been regarded as versus Taren, I think. But uh, like you were mentioning, Nayok, in the stats between the, you know, the head to head stats seem pretty even. Um, so I'm excited. I mean, of course, this is all speculation before going into the match. Uh, and, you know, once we're into the first game, it'll kind of start making more sense. Yeah, exactly. You know, in the finals, the player that gets the first win ends up winning the series 100% of the time. I'm sure that's probably a, that's similar, a similar statistic probably in a round of eight. So, of course, the first map is always going to be very important. It is Sharp's pick with Radeon. You know, actually, thinking back to some bans that we've had throughout the season, Bisu was one of the ones that consistently banned Radeon for whatever reason. We saw Barracks take down Rain on Radeon. So, and even though Rain beat C on Radeon, it seems like it's a really good map for Terran, at least from the games we've seen in ASL. Yeah, Radeon in this matchup, I think, is pretty decent for Terran. That's probably why Sharp picked it first. So it's going to be good for him. I mean, he, he got the first map pick, so that's a small edge to Sharp. Let's see if he can actually, you know, he's going to be feeling comfortable. Let's see if he can actually convert it into a win uh, and get the momentum going. But it looks like the players are ready, and this is going to be the first game in the round of eight, guys. Get hyped. Get ready. We're in the lobby. Let's go. You like that one? I did like that one. I am hyped, man. Okay, in the bottom left, we do have our red Protoss. It is best. In the top right, the Magenta Terran. Mm. It's sharp. As usual, man, that's just what they do. They're always picking that Magenta color. What? Did you notice if he was picking it or not? I had to, I wasn't paying attention to the lobby. I, well, I guess I technically wasn't paying attention to check that out, but I've yeah, we have to investigate. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, the studio's packed, man. A lot of fans for both sides. We saw best fans, and then those other uh, couple of female fans that we saw were shark fans. Oh, like there's some chairs for us, dude. <laughs> yeah, they got them <laughs> set up for us, man. I'm waiting. Yeah. Well, we got crossbonds, and you know, I've heard things about crossbond in TVP. <laughs> yeah, well, Protosses, they have this, like, uh, implant in their brain that just goes off when it's crossbond, and they know to go 12 Nexus. Not this time. <laughs> Not this Best time. Gotta, he's got to get his check down. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so it is just going to be a normal opener. Now, right down the big map. Go ahead. That's a forward rock, so... I think Sharp might actually go for a Rax expand. Yeah, a lot of players, when they put their racks right here, do end up going gasless. And Sharp is sending out a quick scout. There's no gas in his main. So this will be a gasless from him. Now, will anybody cross scout? I guess this is the question. The answer is no. Both are going to intercept each other at top left. Yeah. I've been thinking about this recently, but it just seems like Terran players, they have a very static scouting pattern. And I do wonder sometimes if it would be, you know, why is it that Terran players, they often go for that low risk, like same game plan style, and they never gamba. I really do, I do wonder why all the Terran players, the meta is so risk averse compared to Protoss. Imagine if Terran just sends like a random cross scout, you know, and then just play. The thing is, it's just for Terran, it's it's not very flexible the early game, but 
Anyway. Well, I think certain players do gamba a little bit, but the only players that gamba are generally royal because he's the madman pulling out all yeah. types of strategies. Everybody else is just pretty straightforward. This is pretty much as crazy as you're going to get gasless with, you know, like no Sim City at your natural. Uh, Probe gets in, sees that it is gasless. No reaction from best camera. You know, he's not mega tilted from seeing this, but this is <laughs> one of the best openers that Terran can get. Yeah, Sharp definitely will have a nice opening going into this game. Gets a small eBay block here, which is annoying if, uh, if Best was planning on putting his Nexus down with no range, then that definitely got delayed. And yeah, it is a really good opening from, from Sharp. It could have been even better had he skipped the Marines. He could have this game because there are no Zealots, but you know, obviously most games there will be a Zealot and then you'll be super far behind. So reasonably ahead though from turn. Next is coming down. Best in his base. He's got 200 gas available. No robo just yet. Best okay. is someone that does mix up sometimes. I could potentially see him put down a citadel, but he hasn't shown it just yet. Well, he's committing to the range, uh, which is, uh, I mean, there's no reason not to, but he wants to hit this bunker. It is going to be free damage for a while. I mean, his probe got into the base and he saw how late the gas was from Terran. So he calculated that, you know, most likely I can get a lot of value out of hitting this bunker. No reason to delay the range, though. Often in this position, I would say, uh, pro I, I do think if maybe Sharp didn't go for the eBay block there, Protoss would have went for the Nexus and the earlier Nexus and the delayed range and even delayed it past to robotics. Uh, which is usually what Protosses do. So interesting decision from Best to finish range here. And pretty normal opener from Sharp. It's too packed as a follow-up with an eBay. I actually thought that SCV that was across the map may put down like a proxy starport or something, but not going to happen. We have one add-on so far for Sharp. He's loaded up that bunker to full. There's three goons now about to be attacking that bunker. Yeah, and it looks like, I mean, this is a lot of, some nice value. Yeah, this is really annoying, actually, for Protoss. There's something, you know, bunkers, the way they're made is uh, the bottom side of the bunker actually has slightly more range than the top side. Because I think the the hitbox or whatever, the, like, you know, from where, sorry, the hurt box. What is it, the hit bo The hurt box. The hit is it the hit box? No, the hit box is when you get hit, but hurt is, like, where it comes from. Uh, anyway, the, it shoots from the bottom of the of the bunker more than the top, so it's really annoying for Protosses to hit that. Yep, and Tank comes out, pushes back these goons for now. Best, I don't think, is someone that's like Mini, where he's going to try and snipe your tank that often. So I think Sharp can kind of just chill out for now. Oh, look at this! Hmm. Six minutes Citadel. Oh, this generally means it's going to be two base Arbiter. Yeah, with the second gas, I would assume so. I mean, he doesn't have a third base yet. Like, getting the second gas this early, it only indicates Stargate to me. This is also going to be a nice play if this is going to be like a five tank push across the map, which it looks like it might be, because we're already at three. Double upgrade coming in. Armory, oh. no academy. Ooh, if there's that, Kepler Archive, DT could shut this down. That armory is really late, so I'm thinking Proto or Terran is going to be very aggressive, and if he actually goes for an early push, well, maybe not. He's just sitting back with the three tanks. You know, this kind of Stargate play would be susceptible to something like a five tank push, like you mentioned, Nayuk, and it would be susceptible to these really strong mid-game timings, which are really rare from Terran, because Poros, usually their builds are all around being safe at that point. Um, but, you know, going for this early Stargate means he's on 2-gate goon for a long time, and he has no extra tech. So he was susceptible here around the 7-minute mark, but Sharp didn't actually go for anything, and I think Best is going to be happy with, with that. Oh, a couple Vultures in the natural. Yep, he's going to get in here and he's going to see the Nat gas and he's going to see that this guy has no third base. So there's really only two things Vest could be doing. It's either two base Arbor or it's two base Carrier. 
And so far, Sharp is going to have to guess. He's got an academy coming. He wants to figure out what this is. You know, if you want to go middle of the road here, you could just put down a command center and expand. Those would be good versus both of those. But if you want to go, like, punish a carrier timing, 7th pack is what you want to go for. And it looks like Sharp, maybe it's he's suspecting that it's carriers because his 5th fact is already coming down. Well, he's going for this uh, standard, at this point, it's standard 5 fact uh, play with, uh, you know, 1-1, one, one, delay the starport. And I was wondering, like, how would this do against something like a two-base Arbiter? And especially this version Best is doing, he actually took his third Nexus with the uh, Stargate, which is insanely greedy. Like, had Sharp went for any kind of earlier push than this, uh, he would have done a lot of damage. So this is, like, a really insane setup from Protoss. Like, he's got three bases going, he's got Arbiter already building, and 8-gate following this up. So... I'm not sure that Terran actually has any timing here. Yeah, I don't think Terran has a timing. My opinion is, if you're nailing timings versus an Ar Ar Arbiter play, uh, you're a god. Like, it's just so hard to make work. You know, ever since 5 Fact has started to come back into the meta, you just knew Arbiter was going to be the play at some point. But I fe don't feel like I've seen this variation where... He's already got eight gates. He's already got three bases. His arbor is going to yeah. be on time. This really feels like, in my opinion, Best is crushing his build. Starport coming down for Sharp. Command Center coming down for him also. So he is just going to macro behind this. Yeah, I mean, this this variation that Best did was just so greedy, man. Like, he literally double expanded off of two gate when star usually with two gate you've got a reaver or something so he could have been severely punished um but it it, it is weird because Taren, uh, Taren can have an early game timing around seven minutes you know between seven well generally they push out at seven or between six and eight let's say and that's usually off of two factories maybe maximum three factories and that can put on a lot of pressure um but then, if they don't go for that, their next timing is around here, 10 minutes, when the 5-pack kicks in. But it's already too late, the 10-minute timing here. The Protoss has an Arbiter out, uh, so if Sharp hasn't banked up and you know enough energy, he can't really push. And it's just hard, and Stasis is on the way. Yeah, one of the things you can do versus Arbiters to kind of punish Protoss is you move out a little bit and then back off, because you want them to build units. Like, you don't want them to just double expand, triple expand, you know, rely on having a low gateway count or a low unit count and just, you know, rely on having all the invisible units. You want them to actually build stuff. So I, I like how Sharp moved out. Now he backs off because there's no way in hell he could have actually done any damage. We've got supplies that are like extremely, extremely close, 150 to 140. I'm trying to get a gauge on turret placement. I really don't see that many for, for Sharp. So if there's a recall, it could do a lot of damage, but knowing best, this looks like it's going to be a stasis bust timing, but I don't think you're busting a gasless opener Terran. Yeah, Terran has a lot of supply, and uh, honestly, Arbiter, well, he's going to go. He's going to go for it. He does have one stasis, but nothing juicy to stasis. The mines get cleared. Protoss is pushing forward, but that was only three Vulture stasis there. The Zealots are in the front tanking. Now they're getting bunched up, so they're going to take a lot of damage from the siege tanks. And wow, this attack! Well, actually, the Protoss units are still living. Supplies are pretty close, but it looks like Terran have held really well, actually. Yeah, Terran held. Didn't even have a lifted Rax or eBay in the front either. <laughs> that would have helped out immensely there, but I, I agree. I am kind of surprised that Best got really any damage done there, because I thought Sharp would just easily easily take it down but he does still win the fight he's up 20 supply now now it's three base terran versus three base protoss that is not where you want to be as protoss best is in real trouble he needs to somehow have an amazing engagement otherwise i feel like sharp's gonna max and just steamroll him yeah this has always been the weakness to to stargate Ar or sorry two base arbiter is protoss has very few bases like their economy is really not that good they don't get that really early game start from double expanding early you know the triple nexus setup uh and the fact that of course best he has arbiter tech which is it counts for a lot recalls 
you know, puts a lot of pressure. The threat of recall puts a lot of pressure. Stasis is a really good spell. In that engagement, I don't think he lost the Arbiter, so now he's slowly banking Arbiters up. But look, he's behind in supply, like, significantly. Yeah, he's way behind in supply. And if I saw Sharp's main correctly, he's got triple or quadruple add-on for his factories. He's going to be able to build so many tanks. He doesn't have that many right now. I think he's sitting at something like eight. But with that many add-ons, he'll be able to ramp up to, you know, 16, maybe 20, and then make a move. And by the way, Best did lose that first Arbor, so there's only one right now. He's not going to have that many stasis available when Sharp finally moves out. Yeah, Sharp is playing really well. <laughs> I mean, he's just macroing on point. He went for the right decision to just expand instead of pushing as well. And uh, now, I mean... Just now, Bess is getting his fourth base. We gotta talk about the weakness for Terran is the upgrades. They're not that fast. He's only on 1 0 still, so I do wonder if he's going straight into 2 1. But yeah, looking at this, I think Sharp's just gonna try and set up to take the fourth base at 12 o'clock, and then he'll be looking to push. And Best, I mean, he's gotta do something, man. Oh my God. I. You know, it's very rare that I think to myself, Terran could A move, but this is one of those games where maybe it could actually happen. If Terran is up 30 supply, 2-1, if it hasn't kicked in, it's going to be kicking in in just a second. He has a, multiple vessels. I'm sure one of them has EMP. If he lands an EMP on these Arbiters, Protoss is going to get mauled. So it is imperative that Best gets some juicy stasis off because this Terran army looks fearsome. Yeah, but it's just so hard against EMP. And, well, Sharp, the one thing I will say is he is moving on top of his mines. So he could have cleared those mines before taking this position, and that could be a liability if Bess were to try and bust here. But his supply is just uh, dominating. Yeah, and if there's a stasis right on that army, that would do so much damage. And Sharp, he's on the move now. 2-1 is kicked in. It's go time. It's basically max versus max, but the vessel positioning is in a great spot. The, a lot of the goons have already died. Look at this. So far, it is just an A move. Um, and this is half of Sharp's yeah. army, so he's got to be careful, though, because he isn't moving with all of his tanks. Uh, but now he's just taking this middle of the map. I mean, Protoss is... In a world of hurt here, he has no map control. Look at how he's getting bullied by Terran. And if Terran takes a more for I mean, the more space Terran takes, the harder it is for Protoss to move. And I don't see any Arbiters kind of setting up for a recall. Yeah, I don't either. He needs to land the stasis on the on the vessel. Uh, but Sharp is getting so far on the map, he's still on top of, of mines. But Bess is not set up for an engagement. There's an EMP. Oh. Like, all of his elves are so far back. Oh, he hit double EMP. And he gets the army. This is yes. probably going to be a massacre. Oh, and he actually doesn't have energy. Well, but oh, that's what? not that's not how you want to siege up as Terran. Uh, his upgrade's 2-1. Yep. That's all zealots. They do get meat grinded, but they're actually the tanks aren't really splashing each other. But that was a really good engagement from Protoss. I don't know what Sharp was doing all the way over there. But Sharp's supply is just, you know, when Terran is even, there's no way they're <laughs> taking a bad trade. <laughs> I don't think that fight could have gone better for, for Protoss because, like, you got all the Zealots on the tanks and it still didn't matter. The problem for Protoss was in the initial move at the top side of the map, you know, he lost his, like, eight goons or something. Protoss' army was literally 95% Zealots and now Terran is right on the, on the fourth base doorstep. The vessels are still alive, the tank count is still pretty high, and all Best can do now is counterattack. There's not that many mines on the left side, but he doesn't have any observers. Oh my god, so many goons get clipped by that mine as well, and the supplies. Holy moly, GG. Absolute domination from Sharp there. The gasless really gave him so much supply. Maxed out versus maxed out army, and then he hit triple EMP. All Best got was a single stasis off on the vessel, and he needed went way more than that. Yeah, that was just really impressive from from Sharp. Of course, he had a nice build order uh, advantage from the racks expanding into goon range expand, which again, I think I'm really not sure if Bess would have went for that had he not gone eBay block. 
because uh, that was a massive advantage and you can see it translated to that supply uh you know that that supply that sharp had especially against something like a two base arbiter you know two base arbiter it's very honest in its supply right it's very honest in its production and look at this uh bust here from best they're basically even yeah this attack i think if this wasn't gasless where Terran supply is you know like 20 to 30 supply higher than normal i think this could have worked in fact it looked like it may almost work here because the vultures weren't that many left over but then out of nowhere a lot of the zealots end up falling and not able to actually finish the job off on these tanks and at this point look at look at the probe count it's 44 to 62 yeah. you're talking about how down in the dumps protoss's econ was there so he needed to win with that attack yeah i actually do wonder uh if protoss wasn't just missing probes there you know that that could also be something it's an intangible we won't really know uh are we gonna go into a break now or i think in general they do breaks after each match and that is going to be the yeah. case so we're going to be going into a break and then we'll be back in a couple minutes And we are back. We just saw Sharp get a convincing win in game one. And Bess is going to have to come up with a different plan because that fast arbor, low probe count play did not work at all. But it is going to be his map pick. We've got Blitz coming up. Yeah, I got to say, I am a bit worried for Best because that game, <laughs> I don't know how you have 44 probes at like, what was it, 10 or 11 minutes? Uh, but that's that's not a that that's there, there's no way that's the correct amount of probes and it's not like Taryn was 
doing any run buys. You know, Protoss, minimum 55 probes in this matchup 100% of the time. So I wonder if the jitters got to best in that game. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Best in general from the games I've seen in PvT, he really does tend to play low probe count. But yeah, 44 is pretty low. I think on average, I see him around 55. Uh, but, you know, maybe he thought there was an opening before 2-1 hit with his stasis timing. But unfortunately, there just wasn't. Our players are ready. Let's get into game two. It's going to be Blitz. Okay, in the bottom right, we do have our Protoss. It is best. And in the top right, it is sharp. All right, PVT on Blitz, man. What yeah. are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking. <laughs> Other than Gas Steel, we know that's coming. Yeah, that's definitely coming. Two-player map, Gas Steel is just the best way to open for Protoss, but there are many ways to do it. Is he going to forward pylon? Is he going to build a gate first? Is he just going to gas steal into Nexus? We'll have to wait and see. But honestly, Blitz, it can be a very scary map for Protoss. That two base Terran push can come down straight the like straight down the middle and it comes so fast and yeah. We got a few signs for Sharp out there. He's considered what is it, the Mine King, the Spider Mine King? I guess he's very diligent putting them out on the map. There is the probe incoming for best, and it is going to be pretty fast gate follow-up. Look at this map statistics. That's not something I was expecting to see. 3-0 and for yeah. Terran on Blitz versus Protoss. Yeah, Blitz, you know, despite the fact that Blitz is a two-player map, it seems like a very solid map for Terran. And best okay he's not going to yeah. gas steal this is very mind gamey actually sharp is respecting the possibility of a, of a proxy gate gas steal in which case you know something like a like a mini rush uh where you know you you matter pylon into like shield batteries and stuff like that but best is going to be happy in that he basically didn't have to cut probes to put down this gas. And now he gas steals as well. So... Yeah, this gas, this gas timing really does look like he must have spent a lot of resources to go for a proxy gate, because why else would you gas steal that late? I mean, it was literally down to, like, Sharp had 96 minerals. He needed one more pull to have enough. In fact, if he had cut his SCV and just gone an 11 gas, he would have gotten it down. So, good mind game there. And behind this, Best has skipped his own gas, and he wants to put down that Nexus ASAP. That probe is doing work on that SCV, barely gets an eBay block off. Yeah, and Best will pull back the Zealot to kill this eBay, so he can put down his Nexus early. Um, and he kills the scouting SCV. This is a, in, in my opinion, this seems like a really good opening for, for Protoss, and actually Best is gonna go for that double Zealot. Who was it that we... Wasn't it best that in the previous... When he played against Rush and his gas deals, he would actually cut these zealots and go for a really quick tech. So not this time around. Let's play more aggressively. All right. Well, in response, Sharp is going for Bunker on the low ground. Oh. SCV. Is he up to no good? Is that going to be a second Rax? Or is it going to be a command center? It is a command center. That is weird. Yeah. I mean, I like... Well... Oh, he's gonna try and That's really funny because, oh my god. Oh, the big brain move. He's trying to make it look like he's all inning, but he's actually not. What does it trigger, okay? It just triggers a normal cybernetics. I thought maybe it would trigger like a forge or something from best, but not gonna be the case. I like how Terran has shown that he's got a lot of Marines. It really does look like this could be a two racks. Dude, Sharp is just insane, man. That is, he's so well prepared coming into this. And look at that, like, Best still doesn't know what's going on. And it's actually a command center. 
<laughs> oh did it. my god, dude. Sharp's a... He's an absolute god, man. Like... Well, we were... You gotta... The thing is, you look at that and you're like... I was thinking, well, there's no way uh, Protoss doesn't just run past this bunker with the Zealots, you know, at some point. Like, there's no way Protoss doesn't just see this command center. But best, you know, especially in a tournament environment, you don't you you don't want to take any crazy risks. So, best wanted to just spot the command center before committing to anything like that. And uh, because you know, if it is a two racks, he wants to keep keep these zealots alive. Like you don't want to just throw them away because then it can quickly snowball. So, yeah. wow. I really love this play from Sharp, but I think if he's going to make this move, he's got to go. Like, he's got to commit with this, because otherwise, Protoss is just going to cancel this cannon. Yes, he will have wasted, you know, money on the forge, but, you wow. know, that's not, a, that's not a big loss. He also forced out three Zealots, so that is pretty big, and behind this, Sharp is just playing normal. I, I'm sure that Bess is confused. I guess at this point, he's probably realized that he's been mind game. That's crazy, man. That's absolutely insane. He also finished the cannon, so this is disastrous for Best, honestly. He's in a really bad spot. His build has been completely delayed here. What was that, a five minute robo, if I saw that correctly? So yeah. he is uh, hurting, to say the least. In response, Sharp has gone for double factory. Everything looks kind of similar to the gasless game i guess the armory is a bit faster it's like a 530 armory compared to the 630 armory sharp has gotten his nat gas quite quickly now the goon finally confirms the command center and also sharp already has an academy so he can scan and see what's going on this is really unsettling to be in in the best shoes uh because you know he thought he had a certain he you know just being confused like that and being flustered and then having your builds get completely jacked up like this, uh, it just really doesn't feel well. You start not feeling so confident, you start doubting the game state. It's a really bad spot to be in for best mentally. You know, I mean, not just uh, not just in terms of the build going here. So especially after the first game where, again, I'm, he, I'm convinced he had jitters going into that because 44 probes is very low. So... Man, this is looking really good for Sharp. That scan from Sharp also saw everything. It saw the observatory, it saw the shuttle, it saw the support bay, it saw that range was skipped. He sees literally everything. He doesn't get a probe interception with this vulture, but on the left side of the map, I think there is a probe that has put up some pylon blocking over there. I think the probe is maybe still over there. He's looking for it, but not gonna find anything. That's a lot of zealots. He has just five zealots. Best doesn't even have goons to control the map. He doesn't have an observer or goons. Uh, this third is going to get delayed forever. This reaver is not going to find any damage because it's flying in so late. This is a total disaster for Protoss. I was kind of thinking the same thing. This is going to be a 740 third nexus. That seems pretty late from what I've seen in general in pro games. This this reaver coming across the map isn't going to do anything either. The the barrack spots it. Good man, Sharp is doing really well. He's going into his four four factories. He went really late eBay, so he didn't have to build any any turrets because he's got Goliath out. Yeah, I mean this is just the dream state for Karen, and he's gonna have a nice five pack if he opts to go for that. And uh, meanwhile, Protoss getting Citadel. You know, the Nexus, it could have been worse. I mean, the third Nexus, 730, is borderline acceptable. You know, 630 is like the normal timing. And then usually when you go for shuttle, reaver, plus speed shuttle and stuff like that, then the third Nexus does get put down around the seven minute mark, like a bit after the seven minute mark. So. But I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that Best has speed upgrade as well, so. I don't think he does, because he's gotten a somewhat quick Citadel. Probably gonna start ramping up his gateway production. This is going to be, okay, a, a turret. That was not what I was thinking. I thought it was gonna be a command center or more factories. So 
so far it is still five fact the best is respecting the fact that this time around it could be a five fact push uh, i don't see a templar archive there i don't see a stargate so for now it's just gateway man oh he's got double reaver on the high ground so that's going to be a bit hard for sharp to get through i don't think okay he scans that scan was perfect oh no oh, way if he's not paying attention these reavers are Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> The perfect play there from Best, and uh, well, he, he's got to babysit this shuttle. It doesn't have speed, so. Look at this. I don't even think Sharp is in vision of the Reavers. I think the way Best is dealing with this is he sees the scan, and he just loads them up at the perfect time. Sharp, I think that's his third command center that just got started. And Goliath, wow, not going to get the Observer. Those Reavers are still surprisingly holding the line. Yeah, Best is locked in, man. He's dialed in. He's playing really well now, especially with these Reavers, buying a lot of time, not getting them hit. Oh, but that, that being said, then he eats a couple mines on the Dragoons. They're softened up, and two of them even go down. So that wasn't the best uh, movement there, but Frost doing really well so far, keeping this Terran army in check. Yeah, look at the supply, 140 to 106. Remember last game, when Best was at about 140 supply, Sharp was also at 140 supply. So you're seeing the power of the Gasless coming in. Also, of course, Protoss did go Arbiter, so he obviously cut units for that. And now he's just solely focusing on Gateway units. We've got a fourth Nexus coming in. I never actually saw if that Forge was ever spinning, but it's not spinning right now. I don't know if Protoss has plus... Oh, it's Terran! He's on no man's land! He needs to get back! This is the uh, engagement. Oh, he sieged, and this is the worst siege ever from Terran. He's completely out of position. The Zealots get on top of the, the tanks, and that was a clean cleanup there from Protoss. And honestly, Best, despite the fact that he had a, a nightmare opening, I mean, an absolutely nightmare opening, uh, he's dominating this game now. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what that was looking to accomplish because there was no bases over on the left side. And the only base that was available to attack was the third base. Now Bess is kind of bleeding off units simply because they're all zealots, which aren't, you know, exactly the greatest in the mines. And Sharp, he's going to actually hold this. I thought he was just being completely dead after that. But actually, oh no! He, okay, oh. that was a really good zealot drag. Get some, what, five SCVs? The Reaver? Well, oh, the Reaver. Get those SCVs, man. Oh my god, well that was a, a tremendous amount of damage. Oh, honestly, also Protoss lost a lot of their units, but definitely worth the trades, especially behind this, he does have a Nexus. He is on 4 base, and now for Terran it's going to be hard to take this third. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sharp, that move out, very questionable. I mean, I think he was just going for a 5 pack push, but it got delayed so much by the, the double Reaver that the 8 gate production kicked in. And he had a fat supply block, around 108 supply. He was like desperately building a bunch of depots and you know, alongside his command center. So I think that cut, you know, when you get supply, well, anytime you get supply blocked, it's, it really hampers your, your ability to go for a timing attack. But especially as you're pushing out, it hurts, man. Best is in a really good position now, up like 50 supply. Vulture's not gonna find the angle into the probe line. Well, I mean, I guess he gets like one or two, but not much damage. This command center has been denied for now. I, I think the only way Terran gets back into this game is he just lays mines everywhere and he prays that best, you know, A moves and mistakenly hits a bunch of mines and loses some zealots. You know, that is something that best kind of struggles with is I, I, oftentimes I see he's lacking observers and loses a bunch of units for free. But right now, best is just in such a, an amazing spot, but he wants to prevent Karen from getting this third base, if possible. Yeah, he does want to delay his third base as much as possible, but eventually Terran will take it. And, uh, I mean, still, Protoss is in such a good spot. Look at how late this command center is coming in. He could have honestly, Sharp could have easily taken this base on location, uh, given the, the opening. And he had to put it inside of his main. And then it got delayed to get floated here, so Protoss is going to be feeling really good. I mean, especially after that huge early game engagement. A lot of Terran's tanks are not in the most ideal position. There's one on the low ground there, but there's like two in the main. There's a lot of DPS missing. I don't even 
I actually don't think it matters because there's just so much, so much Protoss. It's a 50 supply lead, but like I was saying, you know, if Mines can get some good connections, that's the way you can get back into the game. The Mines have had some really good, good connections so far, but it's just so much stuff for Protoss in comparison to Terran. This is most likely going to be the game-winning move. Can these tanks hold the line? So far, they really are. Whoa. Yeah, Zalts are going down, but look at the supply from Terran. Yeah. 60 supply, that's, that's just game over, Territorian. I mean, Peros had such a huge supply lead, 160 supply to 100 uh, when the fight started, basically. Having 60 supply uh, leeway is, is huge, especially in, in Zealots. You know, Sharp put down a bunch of mines, and they did buffer for a really long time, but it just wasn't enough, and this third base is now broken. And with that, Terran's dreams of winning this game have also been shattered. Yeah, by the way, those those mines were, like, huge. Like, they got massive value. Sharp, he's not going to tap out just yet. He's going to float his command center. It's not going to get sniped. So he's not out of it just yet. But Protoss is so far ahead. We're approaching that point in the game where bases start getting mined out. So it is imperative that Sharp gets this base landed ASAP because his main's going to be dry pretty soon. Natural, maybe not so dry, but... Definitely needs to get that up and running so he can get some econ going. Vulture's gonna run into the third base again. They're gonna find some damage, but not that much. Yeah, we're getting into fantasy GG territory, man. Terran is completely uh, boned this game. I mean, there's just no way you're ever getting a third base anymore. And the longer you wait, I mean, look, Terran's about to mine out, and the main, he's going to have to oversaturate his main, so that's going to dry up super quickly. And Protoss, four base, you can sit back, take a fifth base. Okay, it looks like Sharp will land this command center eventually. He's going to land it, but he's getting doubled in supply. And here comes Best. He's relentless. He's just always going to attack you if he thinks he can win the game with it. And here he comes again, round, what is it? Two or three shuttles unload directly on the tanks, even pulls in a mine. And Sharp, he sees the writing on the wall. There's the GG coming out in Best. He will tie it up one to one. Yeah, Best salvaged that uh, tremendously. I mean, he was so far behind from the opening. I can't believe, you know, Sharp going for that mine game, it paid off in droves, and that wasn't enough for Sharp. So I think that, you know, that's also very unsettling for, for Sharp after having. Such a huge advantage. Um, and Best, you know, I think he got his mojo back. I mean, he was playing out of his mind with those Reavers, <laughs> delaying the Terran push forever and allowing him to set up that seven to eight gate, you know, uh, configuration. The Reavers were definitely really good. Like I was saying, I don't even think the Reavers had vision. They just, he just knew from the scans that this guy was about to siege him up. And best, look at that probe count. It's just at 50. I mean, that's kind of just best things. Right here, I thought it was going to go really poorly. Like, he did lose yeah. two goons, but I thought it was going to be worse. I thought with this massive army, I was like, well, Terran got their third base. Protoss, I don't see any heavy tech. Terran's in massive trouble. But this move from Sharp, I, I just, I'm not seeing it. Like, there's no bases on the left side of the map. Maybe he was trying to avoid the Reaver, because you see the Reaver is sitting in the middle. Maybe he thought he killed the Observer, he can sneak around. But, hello, Protoss yeah. already here. Also, there was no scan from Sharp. That was kind of the crazy thing, is he didn't even scan ahead, and he just got intercepted immediately. I mean, to be fair, I think both players were kind of unaware of what was happening there. Uh, maybe best, I mean, he knew that the Terran wasn't pushing through the middle lane, uh, so he was just moving his units uh, in preparation. And in those situations, obviously, Protoss is going to excel. I mean, Protoss doesn't really need to set up uh, if Terran isn't set up. So huge misplay there, actually, from Sharp. Not having Vultures even screen in front or, like you mentioned, Nyokin, any kind of scans to, to see where Protoss was at. So huge, huge, huge mistake by Sharp. Yeah, but so far what I'm seeing from Sharp in general, I'm really loving it. I thought the mind game with the command center was pretty nuts and we're going to be going into our caster booth again here we are we're back we are back uh, when i saw that command center not get scouted i was like oh man this is it sharps on fire today this is the sharp that people have been talking about on team liquid where he's just bringing it these days apparently in pro league 
Uh, but with the, t the score being tied now one to one, it doesn't look like uh, that's actually unfolding. Best is actually striking back in the series. Yeah, I didn't know you were a Team Liquid reader, uh, Nyokin, but... Uh... Well, I was gotta, just got to see, because, you know, a lot of people on Team Liquid, they watch Pro League, right? They're they're on top of it. They they know the stats. They know who's on fire these days. Yeah, but do they know a lot about StarCraft? I don't think so. <laughs> well, if you want to learn a lot about StarCraft, you should check out the StarCast TV channel, the one that Cruiser and I run. We've been casting a lot of tournaments including asl obviously we have starcast season one which is complete now it's been posted if you haven't seen that it's basically asl junior the people you see in asl they're playing in it it got such good reception we've got starcast season two coming up uh, pretty soon i'm in the middle of recording it just now it's going to take a while because there's so many games to be casted but definitely check out that channel and if you enjoy the content that we've been posting consider becoming a patreon or making a donation through youtube yeah, I mean, Starcast, the YouTube is crazy. You guys have show matches all the time. I don't know how much casting you're doing, Naokin, but it seems like you're a workhorse. Um, but the real question is, when are you going to stream again? <laughs> yeah, when am I going to stream again when I've been casting all these games? Then I go to work. What do you mean? Yeah, just uh, you got to fit in a nice uh, hour, two hour ladder session in there. I want to see the, the mm. infamous uh, Carrier DT, PVT, Nyokin recall carriers from one side of the map to the other. Yeah, I know you do, man. Actually, yeah. I, I did play a couple games last night. How did they go? Well, there you go. How come they're not on the stream? Well, because they didn't go very well. I think, I, you know what's surprising? Is actually my Terran versus Protoss has been going pretty well lately. But then I play Zergs. I don't know what's happening, man. I'm just getting blasted by these Zergs for whatever reason. Yeah, I have the same uh, experience. TVZ is uh, pretty difficult these days. TVP, ever since uh, Terran's figured out, oh, we don't need to get the starport that early, uh, has been feeling way better, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason, I'm just only having to deal with gateway units. I'm like, great. No <laughs> carriers, no armors. I love it. Let's let's play more games like this. Yeah, let's load up the stream, Nyokin. We're waiting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your uh, legions of fans, Twitch TV, Nyokin. Yeah, the legions. Well, oh. maybe someday, man. It's a lot of hours of StarCraft that after work, I'm just like, I need to chill out. I need to get my... My fan, Final Fantasy going, I need to get my triangle strategy, I need to cook some buzzard wings, and wow, that's what you were telling me you were doing earlier this morning. Yeah, I just uh, wasted a bunch of money, I don't even want to talk about it. Well, Sod has the new expansion out, right, or whatever they want to call it. What's the level Phase. cap now, 40? Uh, well, it's going to be 50 in a couple days here, So, but you know, your boy, he's got to prepare for a couple of show matches. Hmm. He's got what? to prepare for his BSL uh, group. Show matches? Okay, I didn't. I wasn't aware that there. Yeah, Artesis is going to host some show matches mm. on his stream. Okay. And also, mm -hmm. you've got BSL coming up pretty soon, right? Yeah, next weekend. Dang, I'm not going to be there. Oh, yeah. you're not? You knew I was no. going to play and you don't want to watch? That's okay. Well, uh, no, I do want to watch. I'll be watching. I won't be casting, though. But Machine oh. and Raz will be there, I think. Oh, ooh, Boss Bates, the ownage. <laughs> yeah, the ownage. Well, we do have a commercial now, so we're going to be cutting back. And we'll be back in a few minutes.
We are back. We're about to be getting into game three. Before we went into that break, I was going to ask you, man, what class you rolling in? Wow. I'm a warrior, dude. Warrior. What else do you expect Big Jip to be? Are they good in Sod? Nah, not currently. They're absolutely garbage right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's never whatever. I mean, eh. Don't get me started, man. Okay. I know you're always baiting me to go on these long How rants. am I baiting? I don't know anything about WoW. How could I be baiting anything? Well, here's the thing. Um, of course, they're randomly adding all these runes. It, it, the, the devs have no idea what they're doing. They're just kind of throwing <laughs> stuff at the wall so and hoping it sticks. And uh, the balance, I think, from phase to phase or whatever from like level cap to level cap is going to massively change nonstop. So I don't know. I mean, they're really garbage right now, but in a couple days they might be God tier. So who knows? Okay. Just play what you want, man. Play, you know, I'm not a meta slave. I know you're not. Uh, I'm a free person, man. Yeah. Especially I... these MMOs, man. The M MMOs have the lowest IQ gamers imaginable. I mean, these guys, they have no idea, you know, there's people, you know, they have this, uh, they have this sleeping bag, right? That you get into it and you sleep for like two minutes in the game or three minutes and then you get an XP boost. How much do you think the XP boost is? I don't know, 50%? No, 3%. 3%? People, people are literally trying to min-max a 3% boost. Dude, there's like a... A permanent a hundred percent boost in the game. Yeah. And these people are advertising groups where they're like, oh, we have a sleeping bag, three percent. Like it, it it's not what's that gonna save? Like one mob on your level? <laughs> I mean, these people are actually insane. I've... And then you look at the you look at the group, you know, the groups for the raids and stuff and dungeons, people are like only uh, blue parsers uh, get to join. You know what blue parsing is? I have no idea what the blue item. Blue parses? No, blue parse means you're in the top fifty percent of parsing, which is like it. It's nothing. Okay. I, it's just insane. These people. These people are insane. The people that play WoW are insane. And but and just to be clear, you're playing WoW right now, though, right? Uh. No, I'm casting StarCraft okay. with Nyokin right now. But after this is over, you're going to be loading up WoW. Uh, I will probably be going to sleep. Okay. Well, I, I don't, I've never heard of the sleeping bag thing. That is quite funny to me because I don't even think WoW is that hard to level. And, like, it just takes a few hours. But, hey, if that's what you like to do, that's what you like to do. You know, when I was playing Lineage, they had a bunch of RPers where... Uh, people would get on their mounts and just go sightsee and stuff. I mean, I didn't get it, but <laughs> they they do they do do that. I remember seeing a lot of shouts for that in the chat. But our game our game is ready. Let's get into three uh, game three, an important map. A winner here will be up two one and be on the brink of taking the series. Okay, in the bottom left, we do have best. And in the top right, the Terran, it is sharp. Yep, so we got cross spawn again, man. You think the uh, the Protoss sensor is tingling right now? You think the 12 Nexus this is trying <laughs> to pull it out? Yeah, well, he hasn't so far. So, of course, this game, when it's cross spawn, why not? Well, that, that sign said a Dosair, a, a best Corsair. Uh, Bess is well known, or used to be well known, for losing his Sairs basically immediately versus Zerg. But I don't think we're going to see Corsair play in PvT. However, I have seen him try it a few years ago with the B-Web. <laughs> really? Yeah, it, when Fighting Spirit was... Well, I guess Fighting Spirit's always in the map pool, but you know what I mean when it was like a map that people actually played on. Uh, yeah. Pretty often, I did see him try it a few times. PVP, mass goon, mass D web. Well, I doubt we'll see it today. You know, we have seen corsairs in PVT, uh, mostly from mini uh, pioneering with the mass shuttle strat. But nowadays, it's kind of rare to see that too. So, I mean, the you know, 
even Mini doesn't really build Corsairs anymore. And look at this. It's Tanglin, man. He, he can feel it in his bones. This is going to be a 12 Nexus and Sharp. Ooh, the 11 gas. But unfortunately, with it being crossbond, what are you really going to be able to do to this? Yeah, I mean, Sharp has had excellent build choices every single game this series so far. But unfortunately for him, it is cross map. And there's nothing you can do about 12 Nexus on the cross map that is part of the game. Uh, Protoss is going to be in a really good spot here. Of course, Sharp, once he scouts this, he does have some options. You know, he can try and maybe proxy a starport. He can go for, we've seen uh, this three factory push be super trending uh, in ASL particularly. Um, so we'll have to see what Sharp does once he finds Protoss expanded. Look at that factory timing. The legendary 220 factory extremely fast i'm a big fan of the proxy starport in situations like this or starport in your main uh, citadel has a really really open main i feel like this is one of the better maps where if you can't punish the 12 nexus with a, a pull at least you can get some damage done hopefully with the drop Terran is moving out with their first marine but sharp i'm looking at that camera even though there's no reaction he's not happy about this <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is a situation you see very often uh, playing the game, so it's not... It's annoying, but it's not also... It's not impossible for Terran to come back here. Of course, uh, for example, if Vest goes double zealot here, that would be good for Terran. And he's actually rallying the Marines early on. This is going to be annoying for Vest. I like this move. What, what I do myself is I attack the natural with the Marine, and I attack the main with the main probe line with an SCV and it draws the attention in two locations for now oh what's that marine doing gotta help out bro doesn't get the probe but he does at least for force a pull off the mineral line that's that's decent damage yeah that's really good from sharp and he's also keeping Protoss honest I mean there are some situations where maybe Protoss would skip the zealots entirely which would be insane um, of course Probably not against Factory first. Here comes the Vulture, though. This is what the Factory timing is all about. Yep. And this is why you're seeing 11 gas be a thing these days. He gets two probes despite Ter or despite Protoss going, oh! you know, fast two two gate. Yeah, that was that was a bit unlucky there. He missed that third probe. That would have been really really good. He probably would have been almost even in workers with that kill. Yeah, and Sharp he had the choice to just shove the vulture in and maybe trade for another probe but he kept to you know, or he decided to keep it alive so he can put follow-up mines here which i think is an excellent choice and i think sharp is getting is that going to be for a starport it is really late though i mean look at his gas yeah i don't know what this is like he's got enough money for another command center and he's actually oh? going for a command center it's in his main though it's like not even on location I've seen Royal do triple expand with just off of mines, but it's really, really hard to make this work. And Best, who showed that he was going to gate, actually only built one Zealot and one Goon and went straight Robo. This is going to get scouted immediately. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about this one. Uh, I don't know why you would be putting it in your main. There's a very small set of situations where this is really good one would be if Protoss is just going double gate uh units just non-stop units and for some reason pushes across the map early but that's very rare yeah i don't know what to think about this I i've had i've myself had this be successful a couple times but in general not very often uh, for me, the question is, is where's the third base going? Is it going to the mineral only? I mean, the observer is just going to go across the map immediately and see it. If it floats to mid-right, it's so much lost time in, in the traveling that it doesn't seem really worth. Uh, I'm not too sure what this is intending. Maybe he just builds additional SCVs in his main. No, he's going to the mineral only. Yeah, I mean, there's just no... Yeah, I think this covers just if... Cross one for some kind of aggressive move out, uh, pre obs timing, and this third base. I mean, it is a mineral only. It's it's just 
six mineral patches, so it's not a very rich base. Of course, the third command center will allow Terran to catch up in workers, and, you know, it's definitely good. Uh, but I, I don't know why he didn't build it on location, and I'm not sure why he's not just taking 12 o'clock. We'll see how, if this gets punished at all, Vess is going to see this and be like, what? You already have a third base up and running? And he has an armory, man. Like, he didn't even focus on pure units here. This, this is extremely greedy. There is you know that high ground there that he can use it seems like actually this base is close enough where he can cover his natural and also cover his third base maybe this is actually better than i anticipated look he's already got a good sim city he's got a depot coming up he's got ebay float protoss and protoss's base because it was straight observer i don't think it's going to be reaver for a while yeah when protoss goes for this observer opening they can't really punish the triple command center uh, because they have no shuttle it's it's really it comes down to that and well it looks like best has to take a fourth base now so that was a really good choice from sharp to go for the triple cc uh, given the fact that best just opted to not go for a shuttle and uh, it's gonna pay off i mean again he could have just placed it on location but i respect the fact that he just wanted to be super safe and uh, this should be a pretty good uh, game for ten. I mean, I think uh, or Sharp kind of evened out the game. Yeah, his econ's going to be crazy now that he has gone unpunished. Support bait is coming in, but it's really, really late. Like, it's not going to be able to do anything with Mineral Line. Look, Terran already has four factories. Probably going to even have five factories. This, the way this game is playing out, this looks like it could be something like a seven fact. Just plus one, maybe one one timing. No starport, no plus two coming in. Just max out and try and bring it to best six factories should be coming in pretty soon but the observer is going to spot everything he already sees that five facts are on the way yeah you're right i mean i'm, I'm interested to see how terran follows this up uh will he get a starport at some point you know not yet so i think he's probably gonna delay the starport into you know as we've been seeing just getting it when the armor is halfway done and gonna have a huge flood of units and sharp looks like he has an SEV at 12 o'clock he's gonna also probably expand very quickly to that base I would imagine actually actually don't think that's for a command center I think he just wants some vision but you know I could be wrong it is kind of weird to just leave an SCV there but we'll see if he actually does take a fourth base it is shocking to see supplies basically even after a 12 nexus so sharp is really crushing his macro again another perfect scan sees the robo sees everything sees the shuttle sees that it's a lot of gates it's all the citadel no template archive and if sharp scans bottom middle he sees that there's no gas taken there so he doesn't have to worry about arbiters because you gotta have a lot of gas for that it actually is the command center okay sharp this is nine minutes dude. ten this minutes is crazy he's got four command centers six factories uh and I don't think Protoss can punish this yet. This is uh, this is massive, massive eco. I, again, I feel like this is another situation where the best needs to do something about it. But hopefully, he's got more than forty-four probes like you did on on Radeon, because I don't yeah. think he's going to be able to bust. And if he loses his first army into a Terran that's on four bases with massive econ. He's going to be in a world of hurt. Best is up 30 supply. I don't see him moving out on the map, really. So it doesn't seem like he's going to attack just yet. But even if he does, like, where do you attack? Mines are set up everywhere. Well, he's got a shuttle. He's got speed on that shuttle. Uh, but it's just at such a late time. And it looks like, from looking at the mini-map, Terran has a huge amount of turrets at the south southern side of his base. So I'm not quite sure what Best is planning to do here. And Citadel, it's a very good map for Terran. Look, it's very... The setup for Terran defensively is amazing on this map. A lot of Protoss players struggle with 3-base Terran. And now it's a 4-base Terran that's taken no damage. Has all of his factories set up. Has plus 1 already done. Plus 1 armor going to be coming pretty soon. Protoss does hit their own plus 1 weapon power spike. 
I guess uh, this is so much red on the left side. He needs, yeah. or Pro uh, Terra needs to start spamming a ton of depots. You can see he's desperately trying to get mines in time. But this, I think, is the one opportunity where Protoss can come in. The Zealots are leading the charge, though. Already a lot of them have lost their lives. Shuttle, can it unload and get some damage done? The Reaver gets down. But so far, not a lot. Look at how many Zealots have already died. Yeah, and more Terran units coming in to reinforce oh here. Looks like the Protoss units are evaporating. No more Zealot uh, screen to take the hits there, but you know, that was a decent trade for Protoss. He still remains ahead in supply. He shaved off around 50 supply from Terran. You know, to me, what's striking is how does Best not have Storm yet? Like, I, I thought he would have Storm, but he prioritized Reaver play instead. Yeah, it, it is quite strange to me. I think oh, no. double robotics is going to be the play. Uh, his storm was definitely super late this game. I think with that kind of bust, if he had a four Templar shuttle, the fight could have went much better for him. But you know, as played though, it was okay because he retained the supply lead. He shaved off a lot of Terran supply. Storm drop. I mean, he gets some SCVs, but I don't think Terran, like, cares at all. Terran has four command centers already done, hasn't taken any eco damage. Remember, he also had his immediate third base. Uh, I think Bess is in massive trouble. Anybody that's watched or listened to me about TVP, I'm not a big fan of Double Robo. Sharp has been playing out of his mind this game. I think best all he can really do is try and storm this guy to death and one way to get back into the game is if he can get a storm drop on this mineral only ultra's running into the mineral only for protoss and we'll get a couple of probes Ooh, well there's nothing defending these uh scvs and sharp reacts to it perfectly yeah but i mean you just need one storm drop to connect and completely eradicate a mineral line it's it's doable for protoss and storm is just such a good spell that you know if Terran ever missteps the fight can go south real quickly and it's still hard for Terran to push across the map I mean Terran's just gonna be defending for a long time here I think even up until he gets five bases I think Terran wants to get the five base first and then start pushing and generally on this map the fifth base well it should be mid right but maybe Sharp will think about just going top left especially since best is Expanding in that direction. This is so many factories, by the way. This is 10 factory production. One thing that I do see is lacking is there's no vessels. But other than that, Sharp is going to have so many units. And that's five shuttles. I realize storm drops, they're good. But that's 10 supply and, unit, and units that aren't army. Uh, I don't know how this is going to play out. I, I didn't actually get a read on how many Goliath Sharp has. Maybe he doesn't have that many. And it could catch Terran off guard? Well, let me tell you. Tell five me. shuttles, um, you can put a lot of Zealots inside of that. You can also put a couple of Templars in there. And that busts any base. I mean, 12 o'clock, it doesn't matter how many, shuttle, uh, how many turrets you have. If those units are unloading there, they're killing SCVs. So, uh, but I think Sharp, he's pushing so quickly here across the map. Maybe catching best a bit off guard. That's not a lot of units, yeah. though. I'm caught off guard because, like you said, it's not a lot of units. Terran has 165 supply, but where is the supply? It's obviously not in the middle because that's way too tiny. Six shuttles now, and Sharp, he's just buying time with these Ultras. Now, that cybernetics is spinning. You would think that it's going to be for carriers or something, but you know maybe it's actually for armor for a shuttle so they don't get immediately busted, but shuttles are kind of weak. I'm not sure if that's gonna really help that's what he's getting well one thing Protoss has going for them is this upgrade timing from Terran it's not stellar 1-1 we're still you know 15 minutes in 60 minutes in we're still 1-1 so Bess has been completely idle though with these shuttles I'm not liking what he's doing here Protoss generally a double robo they want to always be attacking, always be dropping, always be doing something he's banking up a bunch of resources well this is it I mean 12 o'clock, it is a liability. This is what shuttle, I mean, double robo can bust any position. It's insane. 
How he much needs, they can unload here? He needs to go top middle. There's no mines here. It's just three tanks. This is the, the drop that he's looking for. This is the dream scenario. You unload all those zealots. There's only three tanks. Immediate reaction from Sharp. He's going to save probably all the SCDs. If he doesn't, it's going to be very close. Meanwhile, Best, I thought he was going to attack mid right at the same time. Does not actually commit to that. I think that's smart because there was a lot of defense set up there. Cross is going to lose a lot of stuff on that drop. And Sharp is just going to retake this base. Now, Terran sent a lot of stuff up there. Can Best attack in right now while these tanks are out of position? I mean, Sharp has such a nice spread on his units. And he has Vultures and Mines uh, screening for, these Terran, uh, for, for the tanks. Tanks do have 2-1. A couple Zealots at 12 o'clock are going to clean up the rest of the SCV. So that was a really, really good draw from Bess. It, it, it bought him a lot of time. It prevented a lot of mining. It's slowing down Terran. But now, Sharp, is he going to look to push? Having defended that shuttle attack. Sharp does have a timing now. Yeah, I think he's got 2-1 done. Maybe 3-2 close to being done. And here he comes. This is a maxed out army. Protoss has a big bank. I didn't see how many Templars he had. The, the goon count is pretty high. The zealot count is pretty high. Shuttle, where is it going? Okay, D-Matrix. Best is getting blasted right now. There's like no stopping this army. It doesn't seem like there, he can really engage. Instead, he's going to counter to top middle. But... Okay, there's actually a lot of Templars at the rally point, and maybe Sharp will turn around for this? Well, this is only two shuttles, but that's more than enough, and that's going to do a lot of damage. I don't think Terran can turn around, but it is, I mean, if Terran is not mining from 12 o'clock, they're going to have a very small bank to work with, but this is such a big Terran army. I mean, look at the supplies. This is going to be insanely efficient, and Bess is only fighting with gateway units. He has to get some six storms, but the spread and the engagement so far for Terran looks so good. Oh, EMP would be nuts if he has it. Good storm dodging, actually. Terrans don't often storm dodge that well, so that was really nice. And you can see best supply is really shot down, even though it's close still at 165. I'm sure a lot of the supply is in gateway production right now. Sharp is going to bleed off some tanks towards the left side to try and take down mid left. But remember, there's a lot of shuttles. So those those zealot bombs are going to do a lot of damage. Ooh, Ooh, that was really tank. good. Really good skirmishing here from Best. He does pick off these tanks on the side, and that's going to shave off a lot of Terran's army here. And it's going to buy a lot of time for Protoss. He's still mining at mid left, so that's going to take Sharp. You know, uh, sending more units there, and it looks like Sharp. Well, he's going to go for top left, and these tanks. They're wide open, but they, there's so many tanks. There is so many tanks. Absolutely crushed that army. And Best is in massive trouble right now. He's down 50 supply. Terran is eliminated, you know, the mineral only. He's about to take down mid left. He's about to take down one of the bases at top left. And Best, if you actually look at the mini map, top left, there is really not much mining going down there. There's like three probes over there. So it, he's losing a lot of econ. Sharp's playing out of his mind, man. Just killing so many bases. That mineral only is dead. Nine o'clock's dead. The uh, eleven o'clock um, natural expansion is dead. Sharp's just playing so well. All of a sudden, he's at three-two, possibly three-three soon. Still mining off of three bases. I mean, look at how much mining Terran's having. I faced Terran with four gas and a maxed out army and two-two. And this is versus a Protoss, who, like you said, is just gateways. I mean, he has Storm. Storm is very killer. But Sharp has been dodging everything. Yeah, just playing so well. And this is going to be the kill the kill move here from Sharp. He's going all the way to the top left. He's going to kill these two bases. And after all is said and done, Bess is going to be mining off of just his original three bases. The main is mined out. The natural is close to mined out. Uh, 6 o'clock, I would imagine, is also close to mining out. I think Bess realizes that this game is doomed. He is going to send some shuttles through the left side to try and fend it off this attack, but there's already Goliaths here. There's just a million tanks. There is just so many. The Zealots unload, and basically they immediately die. I guess they get a couple of tanks, but that's oh. it, really. Okay, those, that's a really good storm, but there's no follow-up. Well, I think that was that was amazing there from Protoss, but unfortunately he's just so far behind. I mean, 
he's hurting so much. He definitely needed a couple of these bases to survive. And look at the bank. I mean, Taren is rolling in dough. Uh, I think Bess is, is done for this game. This was a good counterattack to mid right. Bess desperately trying to get the mineral only back up and running. He, uh, Sharp didn't actually evacuate any of these SCVs. He's going to take a big loss here. He's going to lose the command center and tons of SCVs, but these Dragoons are stuck now. This is the entirety of Protoss' army. They're all cornered. Zell's going to try and help save the day. Um, He's not even going to kill this command center, which is massive. It doesn't look like he's going to get it. If he does, it's going to be just barely. The Zealots are actually doing work on the tanks, but they're still... Okay, shuttles, can they save the day? Well, I mean, these are really good traits for Protoss, but again, Ooh. he just has nothing behind this. That's the that's the problem for Best. He's got no money. Yeah, if he had one more base running, I think actually he would have cleaned that all up. and been in, Well, he still would have been behind because Terran's up 50 supply and he's got another base coming, but... That was about as best as best could do right there. That was the perfect counterplay to go for, but unfortunately, he's just starved for money. His mineral only still isn't up. His main and natural are dry. He's only mining on his bottom middle base right now. Yeah, and this was honestly such a sick game from Sharp. It turns out that the quick third command center really paid off, especially into quick four bases. And I don't think Best had any response to that. And I mean, the whole game, Terran has been basically leading in supply. There's just that one attack at 12 o'clock, the early, the first attack Protoss did, that seemed to go in Protoss's favor, but after that, the game just went south. Yep, and this is, this is it. This is going to be the final attack. Best is getting more than doubled in supply. It's 95 to 200. Vessels are still out in the map in EMP. Shuttle going to try and find a miracle. Good storm. Gonna yeah, solid than storms, that. but just no supply. 73 supply. GG gets called by Bess, and Sharp takes the lead in the series 2-1. to one. <laughs> Sharp is crushing it today. The gasless macro was on point. The mind game with the hidden command center, I really love that. You know, I guess there was the massive botch in the middle of the map, but other than that, that was a fantastic game. And now here with the triple expand... He's on fire, and now if you're best, what do you do? Because these attacks that he's making, they're not working unless he can catch Terran out of position. Like Sharp is just winning every fight. Yeah, Sharp's just playing so well. I I think that game on Blitz it looked really scary, honestly. After that, because I think Sharp had such a good opening, and he kind of squandered it. And then you're thinking to yourself, hmm. That's not that's not promising, but you know, that being said, games one and three here for Sharp on these big four player macro maps have been absolute domination. They have. Yeah, the Sharp is playing Unreal right now. I, I I'm still trying to wonder what the cybernetics upgrades were for. Maybe Best was trying to like fake that there were carriers and then catch Sharp, you know, build over overly building Goliaths. I'm not too sure. The shuttles actually i think we're pretty good like they did damage to top middle but this this was a massive swing like this isn't even all of terran's army and watch how much supply gets blasted before the even the fight even starts so many zealots already gone those zealots at the bottom yes they get two tanks but now look at what's left over there's almost no zealots the reavers get off what two shots and they're gone yeah i mean i'm not quite sure this is well, the problem here for Protoss is that it's four base versus four base. So he was yeah. looking for more damage than this. I think in the normal situation, this is good. But because Terran's basically got parity economically, uh, Protoss was looking for more and he didn't quite get it. I did like the worker count from uh, Protoss at that time. It was 62 workers. It was a big bank. I think if you're going to face Sharp today, you're going to have to have massive econ. You're going to have to try and wear down Terran. I don't think a one-punch move is going to work versus him. But Sharp, he is on the brink of moving into the round of four. We're going to be going into a break, and then we'll be back.
We are back, and this is it. This is going to be game four. Sharp on match point. So far, he's playing really well. Seems to have best number, but best not out of it just yet. He's got his map pick. It's going to be Apocalypse. You know, in previous series, we did see Light get taken down by best on this map. He had an, Best had an epic game there versus, you know, the 30 tanks of Light. So I think best for sure can take a game here. Well, he has to uh, to stay alive, right? So yeah. he's up against the ropes here, down one to two against Sharp. Sharp's been playing phenomenally, and especially in the macro games, he just looks better than best right now. So I don't know, man. I, I'm really impressed with how Sharp is playing. And Apocalypse is still a, one of those macro maps. Like, it's, it, it's very easy for Terran to get three bases on this map. And if it gets late, I mean... You got to favor Sharp with how he's been playing so far. Indeed, you do. He's been crushing it in the mid and late game. You know, before you made that comment, I was thinking the one thing we haven't seen from Best is we haven't seen any pressure from him. Maybe it's time to go for like a forward gate and try and disrupt the early game from Sharp. Guess we'll find out as we get into game four. Okay, in the bottom left, he needs a victory. Otherwise, his ASL run is over. It is best. And at the five o'clock, it is the Terran Sharp. You think Sharp is feeling himself here? You think that he could pull out a play from JYJ, go that CC <laughs> first? No, I don't think he will. I think that's a JYJ special, but it would be cool to see someone else do Command Center first. Um, it's just hard to predict Protoss, you know, Protoss, the one skill Protoss has to develop, particularly in this matchup, is build variety and mixing it up constantly, so if a Protoss is good at that, it's hard for Terran to do anything uh, that deviates from standard play, but uh, we'll see. So far, I didn't see anything unusual from Protoss. Okay, well, I guess this is a little different. Pylon Scout, really fast intel from Vest, but unfortunately not going to find Terran first. Looking at that map data at the bottom right, Protoss 5-3 and three overall on Apocalypse. And Sharp, is he queuing? Okay, for a second, I thought he was queuing additional SCVs, but it is just going to be the normal racks and... Like I said, unfortunately not going to find Terran first, so not going to be able to gas steal. In best main, waiting for that gas to come down, and there it is. Everything so far looks very normal. This time around, was it? Uh, I think it actually was an, uh, another 11 gas from Sharp. Didn't actually catch the timing of that, but it looks like it was another 11 gas from him. Yeah, and uh, pretty standard openings here from both players. Like you were saying, Nyokin, and well, that's going to be good for Sharp because, again, he's just been playing so well these games. And, I mean, you know, in the first two games, he had a nice build order advantage, but in the third game, he definitely didn't, and he bounced back convincingly from it. So, I don't know what best approach this this game is going to be. Well, he did have a Zealot queued up, and then when he saw that it was not gasless, he immediately canceled it. So he's not going to go for that Zealot pressure that I was hoping he would go for, and Terran's just going to get away with being able to do whatever they want in the early stages. Sharp, of course, hasn't scouted Protoss just yet, so he's got a second Marine coming. And he does push this probe back. Yeah, just very standard uh, so far. Nothing to really comment about. Three player maps, it is hard to go for something like a 12 Nexus because you're guaranteed getting scouted. Uh, so you kind of can understand why Best opted for Gateway Expand or Core Expand once again. And Sharp, Ooh. of course. That's a quick add on, actually. Yeah, instant add on. And he built his third Marine quite quickly, also. This, this is going to be an FD. Like this is like a really fast three marines, is it not? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm tripping here. Well, no, I think this is pretty normal opening from Taren, but four marines. The fourth marine is 
a lot. I think he had the SCV inside of the main uh, Protoss and then decided he doesn't need to get the Vulture out. There's no Zealot and he already has Scouting Intel. So opted to go for that machine shop already upgrading mines. Um, so I would guess that's a Vulture and just now starting his third depot. So I wonder if Sharp actually cut an SCV here for that fourth Marine. I was about to say the same thing. Is that depot is really late. Now he's used that two open supply to build another unit from the factory. Sharp has cut a lot of SCVs yeah. for this. And he's building a bunker too. So very interesting here. You would assume that maybe he would just go for some pressure, but against Dragoon range, um, the Marines aren't really that good. You only really want to pressure someone who is going robotics into range, which I think is exactly what... I'm not sure if Best went for a no range expand, because I wasn't paying attention to be honest, so... Speed first. Speed first. Oh, That is not something you see very often, and by very often I mean almost ever. He gets into the main, two kills, three kills, four kills? This Man, is- I love this from Sharp. He's in the natural also, by the way. That's why he built so many, that's why he cut so much. So he could have so many vultures that quickly. In the natural also, I, I guess it already died, but this was definitely worth it. No, I mean, he's got two vultures coming and these are gonna shave off even more probes. I've never seen this from Terran, but that's crazy. And you're right, now, and that was definitely a huge cut of SCVs for this. But I, I would imagine he got the damage done. That was so many probes. That was around what five to six probes at the very least, if not more. So Terran with a really nice opening, and I mean, Best can't really push out because the threat of these vultures is containing the goons. Mihai, aren't goons supposed to counter vultures? I thought vultures <laughs> can't deal with dragoons, but I'm watching this guy just not even care. And he, now he's got mine set up. He can't be counterattack. He doesn't even have a tank. And still, Protoss can't counterattack. Well, vultures are uh, probably the most broken unit in the game, so they do counter everything. They are... Except Zerg. Well, they counter Zerg, too. They, they are a menace versus everything and best in response is going to put down an instant third nexus it's gone unscouted he hasn't really built many additional dragoons i think this is a smart move because terran has to respect that hey there could be a counterattack. he obviously doesn't have scan so he doesn't know that there's no reaver coming uh, so i think that this will allow best to catch up yeah so far the supplies aren't too grossly in favor of Terran. Another Vulture gets in, and there's nothing defending the middle line here, and that's, that one Vulture is going to rack up a, a couple more kills. Really sloppy there from Bess. He still hasn't started his Sim City at the natural. That's the biggest thing, and even more Vultures get in. Okay, these ones are definitely not going to do as much damage. Oh, but one green health Vulture is in the mineral line, and okay, two probes? No, just three probes. Yeah, just three, you know, for yeah. the other 11 that he's already gotten. This is yeah. so much damage from Sharp. And this may just trigger like a five-fact timing. There goes the third and fourth factory. Again, he doesn't have... I think that's actually the first two tanks that... Oh, okay, never mind. He does have four tanks. He could... What's funny is, despite him losing all these vultures, is he could go counter right now. Because Protoss has been cutting Dragoons. I don't even think Protoss has more than like seven goons right now. Well, one thing I've noticed about Best this uh, this series is he doesn't opt to go for a very quick shuttle. Like he's been playing Gate Obs almost uh, you know three games now. And Sharp, look at his base. He got five factories down before getting any turrets before starting his academy. That's insanely greedy, Nyoka. Well, he got into the main like eight times with the Vulture and yeah. dealt damage and saw that, hey, this guy doesn't have a support bay. No yeah. reason to build turrets at all if it's impossible for it to be coming. So this is just really well done from Sharp. Despite all the damage, Best is actually up 15 supply. I don't know how that actually unfolded, but I'm sure Sharp will shoot up pretty soon. But now 
the goon count is starting to get pretty scary. What's he at? Around like 10 to 12. He's on high ground. We do see the shuttle out in the field now, so Reaver is coming. Yeah. And, uh, well... The supplies, like you mentioned, I think that's they're pretty good for Protoss, but the problem is the five factory is so quick. And, look, Protoss is still on just five gates, so... Also, one issue with non-stop Vulture Harass is... You know, when you only have two factories, Naokin, you're not building tanks if you're building Vultures. And at some point, even trading one Vulture for one probe, that becomes inefficient. So I think the first run by... And also, he cut a lot of SCVs in the beginning. So, although obviously that was worth it for Terran, I do wonder just how much damage was that really? Because looking at this, I mean, Terran's not... Doesn't seem like he's pushing it any quicker than he would be otherwise. I think it, I think you're right about the cutting. I think it's that fourth marine that did him in. If he had gotten the deep up a little bit faster, then he would have been rolling. But you know, he didn't have any intel onto what Protoss was doing. If there was like a hidden zealot plus a goon, and he didn't have those four marines, he would have been in trouble. But as it's being played out, Sharp is actually not gonna do a timing it's gonna be a command center behind it and instead it's just gonna sit on the high ground i think yeah it's crazy we saw so many probes go down but i'm kind of convinced that the first run by was worth it but the subsequent ones just weren't and it it really cut into the tank timing right because again he only had two factories and he's not making tanks off of them well how's he banking tanks so even though the five fact came quickly relative to Protoss's production. Like, when Terran's sitting there making vultures and trading them, and sure, Protoss is losing probes, but you know what he's not losing? The Dragoons. And uh, relative to that, if there's no tank oh. count, well, there's no push. Oh my god! There's no a hole. Way. I thought that there was no way that this vulture was going to do any damage, but he gets like four or five kills. Is, is there act also a gap there? No, the answer is no. Behind this, you got to give credit to Best here because he's up 30 supply despite taking all this damage. He's been macroing insane and sharp. You know, he doesn't know that he's actually down 40 supplies. He's probably thinking like, wow, I'm in an amazing position. Look how many probes I've actually killed. But he needs to get back and he needs to get back quickly into a fortified position i guess now he realized like hey Protoss actually has a lot of stuff and that's why you can see him backing off yeah that's that's quite strange i mean again when you kind of throw away all your vultures you don't have a screen there so he wasn't feeling comfortable holding the high ground without mines in front um but actually you know looking at this oh. game Protoss looks like he's in a really good spot yeah I think Protoss is about to win, actually. We've been hyping up Sharp this game the entire time. <laughs> Where's the supply? Where's the Sim City? Reaver unloads, actually gets off a couple of shots there that some of the tanks are out of position. The Zealots, can they get on the units? Well, the Protoss wave is never ending. Zealots seem to oh, always be coming down, but I think as we approach the tail end of this, well, the Zealots are getting on top of those tanks there. That was a really good supply lead from Best, so of course it's going to eventually uh, fiddle out for Terran. And it looks like actually Best has done it. He has erased the Terran tank count Ow. as the supplies plummet towards the end there for Sharp. And the top right, well, the third base is not yet compromised. If Terran can somehow stabilize here, he will be ahead actually. But it, it's really crucial here. Unfortunately for Best, he actually pumped out Zealots. With that, re with that reinforcement wave. So he is going to get pushed back by the Vultures, and that's going to buy so much time for Sharp. I, I think Sharp has done it, actually. Look at the natural of this. He has no gas. He does he has no gas at his third base either. Like, he was relying on that to win the game. It did a lot of damage. There's no doubt about it. But Sharp, he's not cut, you know, gas. He's not going, you know, pure Vulture here. He's going to have a real army, and... Yeah, observers pointed out also, like, this is just basically one group of goons plus Mass Zealot into a Terran that's completely set up. Set up. He's got tons of mines, tons of tanks, has 1-1 one, one power spike. That's a lot of factories, man. Uh, that's a lot of Terran. And honestly, with that kind of attack, even though Protoss was super successful in trading for, you know, countless tanks, 
Um, Protoss really wants to at least force Terran to lift that third base, especially if he's not on four bases. And behind this now, I mean, Sharp basically has parity in production. So because Terran stabilized, despite the fact that he lost so many tanks, uh, he's out producing Protoss now. Indeed he is. I think this is actually going to be the last stand from Best. He His pro count is like just so abysmal at the natural. It's 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 like 10. Like that's it. There's not really much econ for him there. He's massively all in with this. Like I said, he's not mining gas. Like he just now got his nat gas. He only has 10 goons. Maybe, maybe he's not all in. He does have a probe over at mid left. I thought for sure that he was just going to pump out as many units as possible and go for it. But it's not going to work this time because Terran is well set up now he's got tons of depots he's got mines everywhere yeah well the problem for protoss not having the gas like <laughs> you've been mentioning dan is uh he, he he's just not gonna have storm anytime soon like he's just constantly building dragoon zealot i think there's i mean i would imagine i would hope that there's templars in that shuttle uh, because if there isn't there's no way this army fights well i don't, I don't think Protoss has plus one weapon either, so they're going to be down versus the armor. Terran's going to have plus two coming probably pretty soon. Protoss's moments of opportunity are slowly fading away. It's eight fact versus like eight gate. Going to be down two one versus zero zero, I think. Like you said, there's no storm. And just now the fourth nexus is going up. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I think this is going to be Sharp's first round of four appearance uh, since since the season one. So uh, really exciting here for Sharp, honestly. He's on the cusp of, of victory. All he has to do, well, actually, that starboard is very late. What? Yeah, that's, that's not what I was expecting to see up there. So I guess 2-1 is not coming, and Protoss does have plus one weapon, actually. If he can hit oh. his plus two power spike, maybe catch Terran sleeping on his upgrades uh maybe best can crawl back in this game but he is down 20 supply terran is almost max now terran has been suiciding some vultures here trying to catch some pros but that just buys him time to get up a massive tank count that's a massive massive mistake though from from sharp just delaying his upgrade 16 minutes in he's gonna start 2-2 that means it's gonna finish around 19 minutes 3-3 isn't gonna be in the game until like you know 22 23 so that gives Protoss a lot of time to just yeah. fight against the Terran efficiently. And he has Storm now. He has a bunch of shuttles. They're both maxed, but he actually has Storm with this. Yeah, Best definitely not out of it. It's now, like you said, with the Storm and with mid left up and running, Sharp, I did not see an additional command center for him. He's going to still be content sitting on the high ground. He's also, by the way, sitting on some mines. It could get dangerous because there's not that many Goliaths. You can see there's only two, and Sharp... He is on the move. It all comes down to this. Best needs to shut this army down. Otherwise, Sharp is going to take the series. This is just such a massive army. And Sharp, instead of smart, instead of attacking bottom left, he's got his eyes set on mid left. He just wants to get on the high ground. That's a lot of Protoss units, though. He has so many zealots. And, okay, this group of goons is going to get caught by the swarm of vultures. I mean, goons, you know, vultures don't fight well against goons, but when they're outnumbering them three to one... <laughs> it can go pretty good. Uh, and Sharp, he's going to oh push my. out onto this high ground. I think this is a bit of a mistake, though. That's a lot of Protoss units. He does have Storm with high ground, and the upgrades from Terran are not that good, but Best is giving him too much respect. He's on what? mines, man. He's on mines. I see so many mines. The Zealot bombs. Can they be good? Oh, that's a really good Storm. He gets four tanks. Oh, but the shuttles just kind of stopped there. It could have kept carpet bombing all over those tanks, but the storms are amazing, and the zealots pulled through. He did. They pushed through. He held this. He held it with the perfect storms and the zealot bombs. The tanks were way too far forward, shooting uphill. And best, he's going to clean up this army. He will lose everything, but so will Terran. Players are going to reset their supply. Best behind this has now decent econ. Terran does have their fourth base, though. I think I think uh, Protoss is dead. Look at the supply. I mean, sorry. Look at the bank from Terran. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, Terran in these positions, they're rallying like a mixture of Vulture Tank Goliath, uh, which is incredibly efficient. Whereas Protoss, like they want to make one big wave of goons. 
than one big wave of zealots. Uh, but it looks like Sharp actually he's not gonna keep pushing here. He's just gonna fall back. And honestly, his his uh, advantage from the mid game is kind of pulling through here. Yeah, if Protoss wasn't so far behind, you know, Terran actually only has four tanks right now. He doesn't have that many tanks at all. So he could have been like you know immediately countered if Protoss had a, a better better econ going for him. But Sharp, he is going to get his fourth base up and running. The problem for me is, how does Best get another base? I, I feel like that was pretty lucky that he held that attack. I don't think he can get bottom right. I don't think it's going to be easy to get top left. Terran's on the move again with him. Look how many mines he's laying. Yeah, that's a lot of mines. I mean, he's not the mine king for nothing. Mm, indeed. I'm pretty sure he got that nickname from that series he played against Bisu, which I think he eventually he lost anyway, so it's, it's <laughs> funny, but it stuck with him because I think Bisu called him the Ma Wong or whatever. Yeah, Ma Wong. Yeah. That was uh that wasn't too long ago though. And uh well, that being said, look at these vultures just laying down mines, embracing his identity. Yeah, he does lose a lot of supply for that, though. I, I realize Protoss did lose a lot of goons, too, and Terran only lost minerals with the vultures, but supplies for a second were in favor of Best. Now it's back in favor of Terran. Sharp is rebuilding that tank count. I would say he needs to get that fourth gas up because he's going to be mined out his gas in his main and natural pretty soon. This is starting to look like a very scary army for Terran. He is missing some tanks, though. He does have plus two weapon completed. Yeah, Sharp actually built even more factories. Uh, he even has factories in his third base. And now both players have kind of gotten back close to Max here. And Best, unfortunately, I mean, he's still up against the ropes. He really needs to find an insane god engage where the storms connect crazily, but. It's hard, man, because at these supplies, it's it's almost impossible for Terran to take a bad trade. I mean, even if you get stormed a lot, if you're just sieged there and, and shooting down Protoss units, you're almost trading evenly, at least. Terran is on the move. I'm surprised that there's no turrets in the center of the map to help support this. If you're going to lay this amount of mines, and you're going to be playing a guy that has this amount of shuttles i would be scared to be making moves like this but look at what sharp did is he drew the units out of position at bottom right and immediately counters to top left these goons are all going to be for not they're going to get taken out and this is going to trigger best to come in with this shuttle but terran's on high ground now this is not the same scenario where terran runs low ground shuttles unload on top of the tanks again great storms there's no vessel for demon oh he actually sniped the templar immediately Wow, that engagement, this engagement is absolutely disastrous for Protoss. And I think with that, Sharp, cementing his lead even further, he has access to this high ground now. So he's going to be threatening 9 o'clock. And you can see the sigh from Bess. You can see he knows this game is slipping away from him. The series is slipping away from him. Terran, he's making his way to mid left. This is basically half of the income from best he all he really has left is his third base at bottom right and mid left and here it goes this is going to be the last stand best needs to crush this army unloading the zealots goliaths and vultures kind of not in the greatest position but the zealot bombs actually clean up all the tanks that was really well done protoss was at a massive deficit and almost brings it back to even i mean best is fighting to the nail this game you know he's been behind uh, ever since that bus failed, and he, I mean, he's been behind since the early game where he yeah. lost a lot of probes. So he is making this game super competitive. We're 23 minutes in, but it just looks like the steepest cliff, steepest hill to, to climb. Oh, that was not the bomb he was looking for. He doesn't really get that many tanks, and now he's he was under 100 supply for a moment all the goliaths have been taken out a, a vessel is out now so d matrix is going to be clutch for sharp here he's under he's putting threat onto the nexus now desperately trying to load up his shuttles to get over here in time but this probe line is going to get ransacked before he gets over there this is this has got to be the final move the goon unloads zealot unloads yeah i mean he's just he's desperately trying to kill this 
these goons, but that's gonna be it. I think Vess is about the GG and Sharp, man. Round of four for him. Super impressive showing here against Vess. I think everyone probably would have underrated him, but like I was mentioning, I wouldn't be surprised. And Sharp just dismantled Vest in this series. In all <laughs> honesty, he outplayed him. Like he just played better than than Vest. He did outplay him, and I like I like how he did varying builds every single time. We had the the gasless. We had the the fake mer fake marine push triple expansion this game he went for i think the first time i've seen somebody rush speed in an asl game and just run by and it did crippling amounts of damage like there was no game where it seemed like best had a read on what sharp was doing in the early game and sharp he's really happy with himself man you can tell i think he has been grinding i think his results have been good you know recently and he's just been playing out of his mind and constantly people have been underrating him myself included uh you know even in the round of 16 we were thinking he was just gonna get blasted but <laughs> he put on such a good show and uh he's just been playing so well man I, i'm really happy for him he did look really really good and 44 probes i mean you knew he was going to be low probe count because of how the game has unfolded there was like no point in this in this game at any at any point where he could rebuild his probe count like, he was just on the back foot the entire time. That was the trade that really broke the camel's back. You know, the the hold that he had at his own natural on third base high ground, that was amazing. But the difference was, is Protoss had high ground. This time, Terran had high ground. And you could see T Protoss supply just, just plummets. And when Terran's up this amount, and they're even in bases, I mean, it, it's just, eventually, you're going to crumble. Yeah, and it, it just seems Sharp had a small edge throughout this whole game, and just kept on to it and i mean best uh to his credit was fighting back valiantly but just way too far behind honestly sharp i think even when we saw sharp play against snow he played such a good game as well and he even took he took snow to game three and even in that game where snow was building carriers on dark origin it seemed to come very close. So Sharp has just been playing phenomenally in TVP. And this sets us up for an interesting, you know, potential scenario. You know, our next match is going to be Hero versus Rush. Hero's worst matchup is Zerg versus Terran. So let's say Rush wins there, right? That yeah. means we have a Terran versus Terran in the semifinals. And Sharp is sick. TVT. He's really freaking good. So there's a real chance that this could lead to him going all the way to the finals. <laughs> that would be really hype, man. I mean, the super underdog story, I think, in this round of eight that has been basically star-studded. You know, we have Rush. We have Hero. Best, Snow, Bisu, uh, Solki, and Mini. And, you know, in that lineup, I think Evan would agree, Sharp, well, he was he isn't really that tier player, but tonight and even before this, like he's just been showing that he does play at that level easily. And he completely dismantled best. I mean, he completely obliterated him, honestly. I think he played really well this series. Yeah, I think was it blitz game and i think it was really just only the blitz game you know we were talking about how good his mind placement was that game i was thinking like man he's not playing that many minds I'm, I'm a bit worried for when he starts attacking but these other games he's been very diligent with his minds every trade except for the one high ground trade on apocalypse went his way he's looking really really strong and i would be worried whoever comes out of the next match that they've got a real real top dog here uh facing that they, they've got to prepare for in the semifinals but you know if hero makes it out you know it, it does unfold a bit lucky for him he's gonna ha obviously have to prepare for rush and now he knows he has to prepare for another terran so he does have practice um he only has to practice for one race is what i'm saying yeah absolutely hero against rush is gonna be crazy that's gonna be tomorrow guys make sure to tune in then uh, I think that's going to be a very, very hard matchup for, for Hero. Rush is looking absolutely amazing these days. So, 
And if we do end up getting a rush versus Sharp, that would be such a hype TVT. Both players just absolute monsters in that matchup. And this side of the bracket, man, I mean, best, you know, I have to say, I think best, he, you know, he always has a lot of hype surrounding him, but I think he's probably uh, the most underperforming of that tier of player. Uh, you know, tier one players, I think he usually performs the the worst out of all of them. So, um, we'll been... see if Sharp can kind of live up to the round of four here. But, yeah, just really impressive from him. Indeed it was. And Team Liquid, they called it. A lot of people were saying that Sharp was looking really good. I think Vadi, when I was casting with him for StarCast, he was also, he was either saying it was Sharp that was looking really good, or Sock. I can't remember exactly which one, but either way, Sharp crushed it today, and he should be very feel, very proud about his performance. And, you know, he's going to have a week time to prepare for whoever comes out, which is going to be nice for him. And I'm sure he's going to have a cel celebratory stream today, just like Shuttle did last week. <laughs> yeah, you were mentioning how Bess was really happy to get yeah paired with sharp but he got blasted so the karma coming into play i, I was thinking that I, I feel like a lot of times when i see players get excited about their group they actually jinx it like jinjin Jin posted a video about how rain was saying his group super easy then didn't yeah. rain like not even win one game yeah rain got completely annihilated <laughs> uh, i mean he was playing what he was playing um what's it called league as uh -huh. practice yeah. Well, it turns out that doesn't really help. No, you, you don't play think so. Well, I mean, um, MOBAs are called like, you know, are they, they're RTSs, but are they really? I don't think so. I think you only control one unit in that in those games. Well, if you're Snow, I mean, you're only controlling two units: you know, your Shuttle and Reaver. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of similar in that aspect, no? Yeah, I guess for Protoss, that is true. <laughs> or if you're Zerg, you're just controlling one group of Mutas versus Terran. ZVZ, same thing. Yeah, Zerg, mm. playing Zerg is basically like playing a MOBA. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Yeah, well, again, Sharp. Sick, sick, sick. Win today. Tomorrow we're going to have a nice matchup as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, now can you got any Papa John's this morning? <laughs> no. But you know what? Before BSL, I had some Papa John's. It was on sale. They had, like, a week straight of sales. I'm like, yep, that's me. I'm ordering. Yeah, yeah, you, you linked me the, the sales. <laughs> yeah, I like just sending it to, like, you and Raz. And we're getting a rundown of how today went. It was alternating wins in the first three games, and then Sharp seals the deal. And Apocalypse didn't actually get to the fifth set. Um, and Sharp is looking very, very good. Of course, as we mentioned, Terran versus Zerg tomorrow. Rush versus Hero. I don't know, man. I, I always like Hero, but... Well, he's not in the round of four yet. So he's the favorite here, actually. He's, he's always destined to make it to the round of four. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. Dan, I'm Look picking up what you're putting down, mm. but that's Rush. Yeah, and what makes Rush so deadly in TVZ? Uh, everything. I mean, Rush is just the best, uh, well, you know, I, I was saying Light is the best Terran player, but now, after this yeah. ASL, I'm convinced it's Rush. Yeah, we, we, we changed that sentiment real quick. <laughs> Well, Rush and Hero have played in the previous ASL, uh, what was it, when you know, a couple seasons ago. And that was a very, very close series. It kind of came down to the wire. So, but Rush, TVZ, I mean, he's oh. insane. How does Troy. that get through? How does that get through? And it's the first map. It's not like it even gets to game five. It's just right from the get-go. We're getting Troy first. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Oh, damn. That was a big yawn I just I, let I, rip out. I saw that. I'm trying to think what maps are missing. Um, Apocalypse is gone, but what's Apocalypse the other one? And... Retro. 
retro. Okay, 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 that makes sense. You know, Zergs got obliterated by JYJ on on retro, so I can understand that fan. But I can't. I am surprised that Troy gets through. Are, are you surprised that it gets through? Oh, cast um, time. Well, ca oh, okay. I gotta wake gotta up. Get ready. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, that Troy got through because I think Terrans uh, don't mind playing versus Zerg on that map. I think it's actually a pretty decent Terran versus Zerg map. I think it's good for Zerg. So, well, whatever. Wait, you want me to go on a nice... No, uh, we don't need a rant. I was just thinking, like, is Rush the type of player that you think it's a, it's a good map for? Or does it not matter? Do you think all the Terrans are fine on it? I think all the Terrans are fine on it. I think the basically like the rush distances are really short, which is really good for Terran. Uh, but then like whatever, Mutas can like hit the assimilator and stuff. I don't know. It seems like Terran's really like playing that map. I have it vetoed, so I have no idea. Yeah, I have it vetoed also. You think I'm unvetoing Troy? You think I'm playing TVP? Dude, I the I played one TVT on that map. The very first TVT I played. Some guy eight racks me just to go and kill the assimilators, and I was tilted ever since. And then you never got out, and you lost yeah. that game. I almost won, but you know, yeah, I, I hate. I that had to about. play an island game, man. I was building drops and goliaths. <laughs> I know the the map. Like if you just lose priority over the center, or you're natural, you're the game's weird. It's just it's like, well, do I want to spend twenty minutes playing a one base game? No, no. I just want to go to the next one. Let's just go. Veto next. that, man. Yeah. Get out of there. Well, I'm sure. I think a lot of people in the chat are wondering right now, where oh. do I get those headbands? Well, now you know my hair is a is a disaster in the mornings when I wake up, and I wake up at five a.m. So I'm not gonna, you know. Usually I need to, you know, I shower to get my hair in order. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I'm not going to shower at 5 a.m. I shower right before I go to bed. And then sometimes I'll shower and then in the bed I'm sleeping and my hair gets all this and that. So I started wearing headbands recently and I enjoy it. Well, you I got feel a like this is, yeah, well, my, uh, my girlfriend bought a bunch for me once I started wearing a couple. I've got bandanas. Like yeah. some old grandma stuff that Romanians wear or whatever. I don't know, man. You gotta you gotta get a red one so you can role play what is it in wild the the phylus headbands or something? The phyus, man. The phyus. I'm headband. impressed you know that one, man. <laughs> well, I only know that because last shot was all just asking me, like, no, okay, let's make a new character. Let's make a new character. And we're always leveling over there. I'm like, oh my god, this bandana quest again. Yeah, everyone wants a piece of Nyokin in <laughs> WoW. Well, that is it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to cut over to the main ASL cast right now. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with Rush versus Hero. Have a good one, guys.